The holidays are unimaginable without a Christmas tree, lavish food and family to many people. Some of these traditions were established by the English royals, who practiced several of the now common holiday costumes. How did Queen Victoria influence our modern way of celebrating Christmas? Lean back and let us explore how the English royals spent their holidays and which of their traditions have endured until today. The first image of a Christmas tree surrounded by the English royal family was published in the Illustrated London News in 1848, which led many to believe that Prince Albert introduced the Christmas tree to England. Albert did encourage the tradition, but he was not the first one to have a Christmas tree. The honour of putting up the very first Christmas tree in Windsor Castle goes to King George III's wife, Queen Charlotte. When young Charlotte left mecklenburg strelitz in Germany to marry King George, she brought with her many of the costumes that she had practiced as a child, including setting up a new branch in the house at Christmas. While it was common in Germany to celebrate the holiday in a more private setting, the Queen transformed it into a public celebration for her family, friends and all members of the royal household. The nobility, who had never seen anything like these decorated branches at Christmas, was in total awe. But it was nothing to the sensation created in 1800, when Queen Charlotte had the first English Christmas tree set up at court. It is delivered that the Queen had a festive party for the children in Windsor that year, where she decided that instead of the traditional new bow, she would set up an entire tree, covered with decoration and fruit, and then load it with presents and set it up in one of the largest rooms at Windsor Castle. Assisted by her ladies-in-waiting, the Queen herself decorated the tree with wax candles. After they had been lit, the whole court gathered around the tree and sang Christmas carols, followed by the highlight of the party, exchanging the gifts. By the time Queen Charlotte died in 1818, the Christmas tree tradition was widely established in high society and it continued to grow. After the German Prince Albert married Princess Victoria in 1840, he kept the previous traditions by and even went on to send decorated trees to schools and army barracks around Windsor. At that point, there were no novelty to the English court, but after the publication of the famous Christmas picture of the royal family, accompanied by the description of the royal Christmas trees every year from 1845 on, the costume of setting up such trees in their own homes caught up with the English people. Victoria and Albert even enjoyed to decorate the trees themselves, lighting the candles and then bringing in the children to admire the tree. Again. Fortunate for us, Queen Victoria journaled how the royal family used to celebrate Christmas at Windsor Castle. On the 24th December 1850, Windsor Castle was covered in snow. Prince Albert started the day outside by hunting, while Victoria took a walk with the children. In the afternoon, they continued to give out presents to their servants and started to arrange the tree. Around six o'clock, the royal family gathered around the tree and exchanged gifts, such as lavish paintings and jewellery. Giving out presents on Christmas Eve was also a German tradition which Albert held up. That year, Victoria received a bracelet containing a miniature of her daughter Louise, who was born in March 1848. The Queen was enchanted with that gift of her beloved Albert. Then it was the seven children's turn who was said to be jumping and shouting with joy over their toys. Lastly, at around 7 o'clock, the royal couple gave the ladies and gentlemen their gifts and then proceeded to dinner. Paintings and jewels were regarded as the most expensive and most valuable gifts at that time, considering photography did not exist yet. Besides these lavished gifts, books, notebooks, fans, Fabergé eggs and so on were also very popular. On the 25th of December, the royal family took a walk with the children to the kennels, followed by attending the service at 11 o'clock. Victoria even noted that she went several times to look at her Christmas presents yet again. 
The trees at Windsor were lit up in the evening and all the royal children were playing around it. The evening was spent yet again with a lavish dinner with family and friends. On the second day of Christmas, the family took their morning walk again, followed by a charade performed by the children. They recited pieces of poetry, sang and danced for their audience. And this last day of Christmas ended with yet another fine dinner joined by the Queen Mother. The Christmas celebrations at Windsor have countless parallels with how many people celebrate the holidays nowadays. Victoria's children sang songs, performed plays, had festive dinners and enjoyed winter sports. Prince Albert was an enthusiastic ice skater and enjoyed to skate on the lake at Frogmore Estate. Queen Victoria also gave it a try, but she preferred to be pushed around in a sledge. On one occasion, Prince Albert was skating in the gardens at Buckingham Palace when the ice broke under him and Queen Victoria rushed to get him out of the water. Albert returned to the palace to have a hot bath and a rest, with no further consequences. Until the death of her beloved husband Albert in 1861, Queen Victoria spent every Christmas with her family at Windsor Castle. After his death, the Queen spent Christmas at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. Here, the family gathered for the celebrations and kept up the traditions established by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert.